Today, kindergartners, I am going to read this book called An Alphabet of Dinosaurs to you. I'm only going to read about half of it, and then next week I will finish reading the other half. Um, it's just a really fun book, really good pictures of dinosaurs, um, and a little bit of information about each dinosaur. So, this says An Alphabet of Dinosaurs. And they have one dinosaur for every letter of the alphabet. So this one is Ankylosaurus. Ankylosaurus was a well-protected dinosaur. It had bony plates as tough as armor under its skin. Its club-like tail could knock over an animal the size of a horse. Now the other cool thing about this book is, they show you the skeleton of the animal, of this animal, and you can see the tail, the club-like tail. Baryonyx had a long, heavy, curved claw on each of its front limbs. A limb is like a leg or an arm. Fans of this meat eater have nicknamed it Claws. So, let's see. So now this one, they show you a close-up of the super sharp claws and part of its arm. Chasmosaurus looked a lot like a small triceratops. Like their larger cousins, Chasmosaurus traveled in great herds across North America. And here is its skeleton. The same cover as the front of the book, the same picture. Deinonychus used its sharp claws as weapons. Some scientists think it may have balanced on one foot and its tail while it attacked with the claws on its other foot. Other scientists guess that Deinonychus may have leaped on its victims with both claws extended. Now you'll notice when I read this part about Deinonychus is that scientists have two different ideas of what he might have done. That's because we, there are no Deinonychuses for us to study. And scientists have to use their best guesses. And sometimes they find out that their best guess wasn't right. And sometimes they find out that their guess was. Ehrlichosaurus was 10 feet long. That's kind of like if you took Mrs. Fullerton and you had me stand on top of my head, it would be like two Mrs. Fullertons was 10 feet long and not built for speed. Scientists believe it moved very slowly. So the skeleton they have of this one is just his, the top of his skull. So the bottom of his jaw, his lower jaw is missing. Looks like they also think maybe he's kind of like an anteater and he ate ants. Fabrosaurus was one of the earliest dinosaurs. It was a small, two-legged animal and thought to be a fast runner. Ooh, scorpion. This is the dinosaur, though. And here are Fabrosaurus' feet. And this dinosaur was very small. It was only about 12 inches tall. That means my book it was smaller than my book. Pretty amazing to think that a dinosaur could be that small. Gallimimus, Gallimimus looked like an ostrich, but with arms instead of wings. Like the ostrich, Gallimimus ran as fast as a racehorse. This is a picture of its skeleton. I love the colors that they draw these dinosaurs. Nobody knows what color dinosaurs were. We know, some of them we know the pattern of their skin. 
but we do not know the color of uh, what their colors were. Most people think they were kind of the drab colors that tortoises are and lizards and but it's really cool to think they could be these cool colors. Herosaurus is one of the oldest known dinosaurs. This early meat eater was an ancestor of Tyrannosaurus rex. It used its many sharp teeth to devour lizard-like creatures. Here is a picture of its skull and you can see definitely a carnivore a meat eater with those sharp teeth. Iguanodon. Iguanodon had spikes on its front limbs where other animals have thumbs. But the first Iguanodon fossil, but the first Iguanodon fossil was found with only one unattached spike. Scientists thought it belonged on the end of the dinosaur's nose like a rhinoceros's horn. So this is a good example of a mistake that the scientists made. This dinosaur was found about 200 years ago, one of the first ones that they found. And these spikes right here, they thought went on their nose. But when, after they found more iguanodon fossils and ones that were complete, they realized that they had made a mistake and these actually went right here. And it's kind of weird to think that they go off to the side like that. So here is a picture of the Iguanodon skeleton. Genesia was part of a group of long-necked plant eaters called Titanosaurus. These animals could move their tails easily in all directions. Oh, and you can see they have it pictured here with the babies and the eggs because dinosaurs are related to reptiles and reptiles lay eggs. Dinosaurs laid eggs also. And here is a picture of its kind of, you can see, kind of fat stumpy um, head. Kind of a big stumpy head. Plant eaters, you can see they have kind of chunkier teeth. Kentrosaurus like its cousin, Stegosaurus, could swing its spiky tail as a weapon when it was in danger. So this is the Kentrosaurus, and you can see he's getting ready to take a, take a, a swipe at this dinosaur that thinks he's going to have a nice dinner. And here is a picture of the Kentrosaurus. You can see those spikes. Leptoceratops was a tiny distant cousin of Triceratops. Since its front legs were so much shorter than its back legs, some scientists think it may have run on its long hind limbs. That's kind of interesting to think that he would go upright and just run on the back legs. That's a very interesting thought, isn't it? And there is a picture of its skull. Myasaura, Myasaura mothers laid their eggs in nests built of leaves and other plant matter. They brought food to their babies and protected them until they were big enough to leave the nest. And a Myasaura the reason they know all that information is because they found the Myasaura eggs in a nest, in nest, and they could see that they, so they're guessing that all this information, that that's probably what they did. And there is a skeleton picture of the Myasaura. And that is all I'm going to read today. We went, made it to the M's. We will start with the N's next week. Hope you enjoyed that book. Today I'm going to share with you um, some more fossils. So I have three fossils. Three of my, well, actually I have two fossils. Let me correct myself. And uh, last week, if you remember, I think I mentioned that my dad was a paleontologist 
and he hunted for fossils in Southern California. Now, these three fossils, sorry, these two fossils, come from the same, the same kind of an animal. So this one is not a fossil. These two are fossils. This is a regular nowadays bone. Well now, this bone is actually probably about ooh, 60 years old now, but it's just a regular bone and I can kind of tell because this, this is much lighter than this one. This one feels very heavy. You can also see that, you know, we typically think of bones as being white. Um, this is definitely white. And if you could see, which I don't know if you can, you could kind of see that it has pores in it. So this is just a regular nowadays bone. This bone and this bone have both been turned into fossils. So, and if you remember, um, Aliki, the book I read last week, she talked about how the they get changed to stone usually. Not always, but they usually turn into stone. So if I wanted to throw this, it would not break because it is just like a rock. It is hard like, like a rock. And I feel very comfortable just doing that with it because they're not going to break. I guess, um, now, the, um, so remember the process, these usually get bare, to turn into a fossil, it usually gets buried by dirt, lots of dirt, and then a, a change happens where minerals seep into the bone and turn it into a fossil. So now these three bones all come from the same kind of animal. And the very interesting thing is, well, they all come from horses. Now these horses, I believe, are extinct. This is from a nowadays horse. This bone actually comes from um, part of the um, horse's leg, and, um, and it's the same part. Now you'll notice that these are like three different sizes. So this is a regular horse size. This is down at the bottom of their leg, not up at the top, but down towards the bottom of their leg. And I can't remember exactly which one, but horses actually, um, you know, have quite a few bones towards the bottom of their foot, you know, closer to their foot, to their hoof. So now the interesting thing is the way one of the way, one of the things that um, paleontologists, scientists do when they have bones. They pick up a bone, find the bone, you know, uncover it, and then they look at the bone and they, they look at it and then they might go and find some other bone that looks similar from a nowadays animal. And if we turn this around and we look at it this way, we can see that there's kind of the same shape going on here. Uh, we can see the side. They kind of have this same thing. If I turn it this way, there's kind of the same thing going on. Now, these didn't really go together like this, but you can see that these two could have fit together like this. And this would be, this section in the between here is, would be called a joint. So, you know, that's how we move. You have lots of joints. You have joints all over your hands. There's one here, there's one here, there's one here, there's one here. There's a lot, a lot in your wrist. So, um, anyways, so scientists can look at this and then they go, wow, I think this is the same bone, but from, from a different animal or from a, you know, this is from a horse, maybe this is from a horse. Now if they hit the jackpot and they find the whole animal, then they know exactly where this is from. But so these are all the same animal. This obviously was a very, 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 very small horse. And this was a little bit bigger horse and nowadays horse, you can see it's fairly large. So I just thought you would enjoy knowing a little bit more about fossils knowing a little bit more about um, how paleontologists can look at fossils and discover things. 
Today, we are not talking about this kind of stuff, your experiment. Your experiment will be on camouflage, which there's not a whole lot of camouflage going on in here, but you can kind of see that this dinosaur looks like maybe it's a little bit camouflaged in the setting that it's in. But camouflage and kind of the um, colors, color, possible colors of dinosaurs. So that will be an interesting experiment. Make sure you take some pictures for me and have your mom or dad text me them because I really want to see your, exper your experiments. Okay, and your experiment today, it's perfectly fine if you have mom, dad, brother, sister help you do some of the cutting because there's a lot of cutting into today's experiment. Okay, I hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye.